Hi, my name is Randy, and today I'd like to go through the procedure of disassembling and reassembling a Sambit Cormont clamping unit. Now, for static clamping units, there's a lot of different configurations, and they all basically come apart and go back together in the same fashion. So, we'll start by showing you some of the tools that are required to do the job. So a few of the tools that you're going to need, you might possibly need an impact driver. If the screws on the clamping unit are too tight, the impact driver will be really handy. You'll need a Samvik Cormont withdrawal tool and extraction tool. You can get these from your local Samvik sales representative. A 10 millimeter Allen key will fit our C4 clamping unit. It's handy to have some tweezers and a marker. You need a couple of Torx Plus drivers. You're going to need a 20 IP and a 15 IP and a 3 millimeter Allen key, a grease nipple, that's also a Sandvik supplied item, and you might possibly need a hammer and possibly a soft blow mallet. So, as I mentioned, most of these clamping units will come apart and go back together in the same fashion, and we'll get started. Okay, it's very helpful to secure your clamping unit in a vise, and I'm going to start by removing some of these screws. And this one seems awfully tight, so that's maybe where the impact driver will come in handy. So for this size, I need a couple of little adapters. I'm going to use a Torx Plus bit and give it a smack. There we go. That's loose. So I'll see if the rest of these are tight or loose. There we go. Okay, the rest of them were pretty loose, so we're just going to remove these four screws. And then I'm going to take out the screw for the camshaft retainer. There we go. So five screws. The next step, we're going to take this extraction tool from Sandvik Cormont. I'm going to fasten it on to the polygon sleeve. Just hand tight will do. And that's where the marker comes in. I like to put a mark on the front of the polygon sleeve here and the body of the housing so that when it goes back together we don't change this right handed clamping unit to a left handed clamping unit. So now using the withdrawal tool together with the extraction tool we're just going to remove the polygon sleeve. Then, I want to pull the camshaft out. And as you know, if you put an Allen key into the socket of a hex and pull on it, it's just going to slide right out. So there's a little trick here where I push down fairly hard on the, with the palm of my hand on the Allen key. And I'll take one of these screws from the polygon sleeve, and it, they usually fit right into this retainer here. We'll thread in there to give you a little handle, because we need to pull the retainer and the camshaft out together. Okay, so we're going to put the Allen key in here. Can you press down and give it a wiggle? At the same time, I'm going to use this little handle on the retainer and pull these out. There, the retainer came out and now the camshaft is free to come out. So you can actually see how the retainer, there's a little step on the retainer here that meshes in with this little groove on the camshaft. And that's what gives the camshaft 180 degree movement and controls that. Then we can just reach inside, pop up that drawbar assembly and pull out the drawbar assembly. And there you have your clamping unit disassembled. As you can see there, there's uh, a nice bore in there with counter bores and in some cases there might be a little pocket at the bottom for a spring to fit into the pocket. In this particular case there's no spring in behind the drawbar so it's nothing to worry about. So what we want to look for on the camshaft for where you want to make sure that the flange is in good condition, no cracks, no broken parts. The two bearing diameters are in good shape and that the lobes have a really nice straight line here without any wear factor. In this particular case 
this camshaft looks like it's in really good shape. And uh, incidentally, this hole here is where grease will come out when you're greasing these units, and we'll talk about that a bit later. With the drawbar assembly, what we're looking for is, again, there's a few key wear points. Inside this square window at the back, we're looking in here to see if there's any big wear area or any concaved area from the camshaft where it makes contact. This one looks in really good condition. And we're also checking in this area here for any cracks right along here. The spring has to be able to function up and down properly and the segments be able to move freely. This particular one looks in really good condition so we can reassemble this one. Also on the retainer, just in front of the step that meshes with the camshaft, we want to make sure that there's no wear on the front edge of that retainer because that's what's keeping this camshaft from moving any farther than 180 degrees. If there is wear there, that's an indication that somebody's been using excessive force for clamping. So as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of different configurations of static clamping units. And in this particular one that we're taking apart, when we remove the drawbar assembly, there's actually no spring down in the pocket behind the drawbar. However, when you order replacement parts, you will always get a spring with a drawbar assembly. And the reason for that is some other style clamping units, such as this 2085 style unit, will require a spring behind the drawbar assembly. So now we want to have a quick look at the polygon sleeve to make sure that there's no damage on the ground surfaces. The diameter looks good, the flange looks good. The polygon inside looks in really good condition. So for this particular clamping unit, everything looks in really good condition. We'll use all the same components to reassemble it. The reassembly process is exactly the opposite of disassembly. So again, if you have a model that has a spring in it, that would be the first thing that we would be putting back into. So we would just grab it, drop it down into that pocket that is there, and then the next step would be your drawbar assembly. So if you're replacing the drawbar assembly, you're putting in a new one, it's always a really good idea to get a little bit of the uh, a grease on the o-ring so we make sure that the o-ring has a bit of lubrication in it because we're going to put it down into its pocket then it's going to pop down into the bore that it seats in the next step is to replace the camshaft so again i like to use the allen key to handle the camshaft and i'm going to just check in the bore here for an alignment with the bore at the back and put the camshaft in just far enough so that we can still get the retainer to go in with it. So again, I'm going to put that uh, screw from the polygon sleeve onto the retainer, use it as a little handle, get it into that groove there, give it a wiggle and a little push it in and everything lines up nice. Okay, so at this point, we're going to put the polygon sleeve back in. I'm going to reposition this clamping unit so I have a better grip on it overall in the vise. Make sure the surface is clean and the polygon sleeve is clean. We're going to orient the, the mark that we made with the marker to the mark on the front face. That way we're not going to change this clamping unit from a right hand to a left hand. However, if you need to do that, if you need to change a right to a left or a left to a right, all you need to do is pull those four screws out, pull off the polygon sleeve, turn it 180 degrees, put it back on, and you'll be ready to go. So I'm going to use the withdrawal tool to reinstall the polygon sleeve. And lining it up as best I can with the front face here on the front face of the body.
Sometimes you need to give it a little tap to move it radially. And you can generally tell when it's all the way down nice and solid. So that polygon sleeve is nice and tight. I'll remove the withdrawal tool. And we're ready to replace the screws. Now I generally just tighten these down by hand. And I'm going to reposition in the vise again before I replace the screw for the retainer. You can use the withdrawal tool with the extraction tool together, combined together, and, and use that to tap this polygon sleeve back on. But if you don't have one, it's not a big deal. You can use a soft gold mallet going around. You can get it lined up. If you're out of alignment a little bit, you just tap it a bit to rotate it. And now it's down on those dowel pins. So now I can start to give it some good. And there we go. And now we're going to check for functionality. 180 degree movement. That's the purpose of the retainer mating with the camshaft. The retainer keeps the camshaft from moving any farther than 180 degrees. And I can see in here that we're getting some good movement. This is in the unclamped position. So if I go clockwise, you should see that drawbar assembly move and you'll see it pulls back in. I do 180 degree clamp and then 180 degrees to unclamp. And it's, it's hitting a stop because it's, the retainer is the stop. So this one looks like it's clamping and unclamping very nicely. I'll just pop a tool into there. We'll clamp it up. And normally we do recommend to use a torque wrench, so I'm just giving a little bit of pressure here right now. It looks like the tool is clamping. And one way to check, you know, once you've clamped it up with your torque wrench at the proper setting, which in this case a C4 is always going to be 50 Newton meters, I'm going to crack it loose, and then it should get a little bit tight again before you hit your 180 mark and then it'll pop loose and out comes your cutting tool. So this clamping unit's almost ready to go back into service. One last thing, I'd like to grease this unit. So before we grease it, make the, like to make sure that it's in the clamped position, which is clockwise. Then using the three millimeter Allen key, I'm going to remove a set screw that's down in the center of the camshaft. There's our set screw, and this is where our grease nipple comes in. We're just going to thread this grease nipple into here by hand, and we're going to apply the grease to the clamping unit until we see that coolant might be seeping out through around the edge of the camshaft. So this is what you'll normally see when you're doing a preventive maintenance type lubrication on, the, on your machine. And then once you see clean grease coming out, you know that it's good and we can just remove that grease nipple, replace the set screw, and now this clamping unit is ready to go back into service. So I hope this was helpful and you keep your clamping units in good condition, they'll last you a long, long time.